he gather in your name. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will lead us, that you will guide us, that your blessing will come upon us even this evening. Lord, you are the best teacher. So Father, teach us tonight. And we pray in the name of Jesus that you will help our facilitator. And may all we will do today bring glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I, I guess uh, it's been an awesome week for all of us. And uh, we've been chewing on what uh, we've all uh, had last week. And today is the second session. And uh, uh, we don't know whether today will be the last, but Anke Raf will tell us whether uh, everything will end today or not. But I think one of the key uh, takeaways uh, last week is uh, that uh, for you to have a, a balanced life, you must, uh, you should be able to arrange uh, your life well. And uh, the first two pictures were very instructive, if you remember, a very shalom world, a world full of peace, a world full of tranquility. And then you also have a very dry world. And the, uh, what did the plot is that if you fail to arrange your pyramid well, you can easily move from a very well nourished well to a very dry stressed world. Okay. And so he promised today to teach us how to do that. And last week he uh, did emphasize why we have to do that. And today uh, he said he will teach us how we can have a balanced Christian life. All right, but any, any, anything, uh, any thoughts, any question before we, we move on? Uh, anybody want to say anything? What stood out for you uh, before we move on? Those who were present. Anybody, those who were around last week? You want to share what stood out for you last week? Those who were around. Oh, they didn't come. <laughs> Auntie Karo, were you around? Or oh, Uncle Marcus? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, as we as go on, can you put your video up? As man, cleave it. Is it cleave it or? Um, Please put your uh, camera, your video up. Yeah, look, yeah. looking at the, the pyramid and the various elements, I was uh, reflecting on it and I told myself, look, over the phases of life, throughout the phases of life, I think the, the elements of the pyramid may be shuffling uh, up and down. Uh, for example, when you're young, the emphasis may be on work, 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 work. And so, so the base may be more of work than, than the other elements. Mm -hmm. But as, as the, the pyramid begins to turn, it, turn itself on its head, I think we uh, should have that humility to accept that those who can correct us or who can draw our attention to it, that we are turning the pyramid on its head, will be those who are close to us. And we should have that humility to accept when they draw attention to it. And secondly, those who may want to draw attention to it, that they may have to also do it in a manner that, um, we do not take it as if uh, they are kind of attacking us. So th that, that's what I thought mm. I reflected over during the week. Thank you. That's very powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, in, any last thoughts? Those who were around last week? Who else was around? Anke John, were you around? Anke John, were you around last week? 
or Caroline? Yeah, no, I, I wasn't. This is the first time I'm joining. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Any any other person? I just want the last comment so that we can move on. Hey. Mm. Okay. Maybe when the feedback session, okay, Raf begins to ask for the assignment feedback session, maybe we'll get more people talking. All right. So the grounds will still remains. Uh, you put uh, your phone off, uh, your, you mute your, your device and uh, the chat are still opened. Feel free to drop comments, questions, suggestions in the chat. And uh, if you want to ask the question, you want to make a contribution, you raise your hand and then we will uh, spot you and give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, just be mindful. Uh, don't let your, your video also come on mistakenly, uh, okay? So that we can all uh, have a very nice session tonight. So uh, at this time, I'll hand over to Anke Raf uh, to take us through uh, the session. So Anke Raf. Thank you, Pastor Felix. I think you've done a wonderful introduction. Um, I am a bit uh, surprised at some of the age groups represented on this because we were expecting to speak to young people. But it's, it, it tells me that it is something a lot of us need through different stages of our lives, like Marcus was suggesting. And that was a really good insight. Um, I, so we'll be learning from each other as we go along. And I'll try and just lead the thinking so that we can share. I do encourage sharing when I call for it so that it really warms up the discussion and improves the ideas and application. So I want to also stress that I am not solving your personal life balance problem. The, the, the variety of issues that we individually face don't have formulae for solving. It is a synthesis of our work with God, our own personal knowledge of ourselves and the circumstances in which we find ourselves. So I want us all to look out for principles and to be able to hold those, to learn how to manage our lives in the circumstance of principles. I am calling principles, therefore, the weights of God. That remember when we were talking about the balance last, last week, these weights are what help us know that I've taken the right amount of God's um, prescription for this matter. And so I need to find out how my life weighs on the other side. So the, the scale is balanced and I have peace. So if we delve into, Felix, can I share? I can share my screen. Yes, please, try sharing. Can you see? He hasn't come yet. Hello. Just a minute. What time? Fellas, you would have to make the ref the co host. I think we've made it that everyone can share. So he can share. Yeah. Can you see? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, you can see it now. I, I can see. You can see now. We yes, can see please. now. Okay. So, so forgive my my unbalanced technology capabilities. <laughs> Is it clear now? Very clear. Okay, so here we go. Um, can, can, can the person with his radio or speech on please mute? 
Can you tell whose radio is on? Okay, so session one was why, like Pastor Felix said. Session two is how. As I prepared, I'd hope to finish everything in this session, but I started getting into the delicacies of the last three points, integration, times and seasons, and running versus resting. And if we have enough time, I'll do them in this session. If not, we'll have a session two, part two, next week, God willing. So this week we are focused on working out balance in our lives. And I thought it'd be interesting to hear um, or have anybody share their, their pyramid if they are willing. If you have a laptop, I think that, that will be easier to do. And once we've had one or two, just give us a feel of what they, they looked at. I want to share a template, a base of principles from one scripture passage that helps us see life balance in a godly way. And then to look at examples of balanced and unbalanced from which we can pick up tips for our lives. Then we can go into the latter half if there's time. So we had this exercise for, to, for each of us to do, weigh yourself by time. And what does your pyramid look like? Does anybody want to share verbally what they found as they fill the chart on time or share, actually share their pyramid, what it looked like when you drew it out. If if you have something to share, you're you're welcome to do so now. Okay. If we are sharing shy, Pastor Felix, may I suggest that people can send you by WhatsApp their own little diagram if they want to, and we can look at it and make a few. Uh, interesting comments um, after the session and pass it back to them individually. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll drop my, my WhatsApp uh, uh, in the chat very soon. Thank you. Okay, then. So I'll go on into our... So this was the chat we were supposed to fill and find out how we spend our time and use that to examine what our, how it speaks to our pyramids. But let's move on. A godly life balance template. And I'd like to read a, a, a scripture passage that I found very useful for my personal life. It speaks in the context of a church leader, a pastor or a deacon. But I want us to look at it in terms of how it affects our own lives. And it's not just speaking to pastors in that sense. The passage says here is a trustworthy saying. If anyone sets his heart on being an overseer, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, the husband of but one wife, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? He must not be a recent convert or he may become conceited and fall under the same judgment as the devil. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into the devil's trap. Deacons likewise are to be men worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truths of the faith with a clear conscience. 
they must first be tested. And then if there's nothing, let them serve as deacons. Amen. So I've, I've pieced together a pyramid out of this passage, and I want to walk us through it and then show some of its characteristics. The order of them will become clear as we look at balance and imbalance. But first at the foundation, before you can be somebody who ministers for the kingdom of God, you must have a mature faith. You must not be a recent convert. There must be stability in your relationship with God. That is the foundation. The second thing, which is often misplaced in building our pyramids, is the position of your family. If you're married, your spouse first, and then your children. If you don't know how to look after this core of society, you are not qualified to minister in God's name. In addition to this, a lot of people had learned in time past that it's a value which seems to be dying, that for certain leadership roles at work, they will want a married person for the same reason as God prescribes it for leading in ministry work in the church. Because there's certain things being married, if you're married with good balance, teach you that enable you to do work with other people in a certain godly way then the person must not be a beggar and dependent on other people because it degrades your social respect. Unless you're in a ministry where there is a, a faith-based uh, support system and there's then a logic and validity for this. So the ability to work in order to support your physical life and the lives of the, those who are responsible, you are responsible for, is an important quality as well. Then you must have a good reputation in society. You sh shouldn't have a bad name and it's hidden under cloaks that you then take to go and stand up before the people of God. So when you come to the point of ministry, the Bible calls it a noble purpose. And that's where I want it tra to translate across the board for not only ministry in the church, but what is your life purpose? What drives you in, your, in, in shaping your triangle or pyramid so that at the sharp end of your life, you are effective in purpose, purpose-driven uh, has become a popular word. And I like to see this peak as the arrowhead of your life. It is here not just to live generally and then pass and die, but to pierce, to penetrate, to do work that honors and glorifies God in his kingdom. This scale has certain qualifications or characteristics. If you look at the far right of this slide, when you go from your one-on-one -on -one relationship with God, and you start working up through family, through work, through society, and in in your in life, you see that you go from few numbers to increasing numbers. But at the same time, you go from greater intimacy and the intimacy decreases as you go up this pyramid. In other words, you cannot, you cannot hope to be intimate with everybody in society. God has appointed intimacy with him first at the closest level, and then with your family, before the eight hours or whatever you're spending in a workplace, before the broader arms of society, and then the widespread arms of outreach. This, these two things are very important to remember when you are thinking about balance, because you are accountable first at the base of your, your pyramid to God at a higher level than you are accountable to society and your neighbor. If you take care of your family well, then God, you, you have fulfilled your responsibility at that level. And you, you are therefore going to be given more and more responsibility as you climb up the scale. And this balance 
is very important in God's sight. So if we come up to this passage that we are going to go into for the rest of for the rest of the uh, talk, you'll see that we are going to show an example of balance in each of the different departments of the pyramid and an example of imbalance and try and see the way that they work out. For each level, we provide a biblical weight and scale like, like we saw from the first slide. And then we look at what happens when there's imbalance. Here's the first one. At the foundation level, your personal, and we are speaking as Christians, your personal relationship with God is the most important relationship of your life. It is your base and foundation. And for us as Christians, this is where Christ is formed in you. If you don't get it at that level, then you are basically behaving like a person of the world because you, are, you have two kings operating at that point and the split causes tension and imbalance. So the things to do with the utter devotion of love that we give to God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and with all our strength, that is how we are supposed to build ourselves and build our relationship with God at that foundation. It requires obedience. The, the demonstration of our love for God is strictly or, or, or fundamentally based on the level of our obedience to God. So when we are filled with his spirit and we walk in his spirit, we leave this platform with God to live a life that is Christ expressing himself through us. And that's our greatest level of stability. There are things to do to increase your effectiveness in doing this. Your personal quiet time or devotion, it should be regular. It's not something you toy with. There are times and seasons when it's not possible to keep it on the uh, regular scale, but we'll discuss that later. Your personal Bible study life and your personal prayer life, these core activities are necessary for your intimacy with God. If we looked at what happens when there's imbalance in this area, you notice that I've made a very big loaf of bread for our relationship with God. The secret problem in this, when you see that above it, the people who depend on you, spouse and children, are almost like skeletons, spiritually or physically. They are not loved. They are not looked after. They are sacrificed like the Pharisees. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. He said, you, you have this uh, law that if I say the gift I should have given to God, to my parents, I give it to God, then uh, I'm relieved of the law. So they starve their parents for the artificial expression of a relationship with God. It is not possible to say you love God when you do not love the people that are above you because of that innate and natural expression that creates balance. This loaf of bread is a hollow relationship with God. If you opened it, you'll find that there's nothing inside it. And it's a bit like how the Jesus would say to the Pharisees that you are uh, tombs, whitewashed tombs. Inside you're full of dead men's bones. God does not respect overbalance on te in terms of loving him or saying that you love him when you cannot show it to the rest of your life and the rest of your life would disintegrate. We call this the hollow pie faith. There is no substance in it. It is a dead faith. The second one has to do with our, our self. So we've looked at ourselves relating with God, but the commandment about love carries three persons with it. The first one is to love God. The second is to love your neighbor, but there is a third as yourself. 
And if you have not learned how to love yourself within your, your, your relationship with God and gotten healing where there have been problems in your past and Christ is not being formed in you, then a lot of imbalance tends to, to occur from there. And we have difficult relationships with other people because of it. So in this area, we want to remember three areas that Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with man. There are four areas of balance in the first instance that we need to attain. Wisdom is intellectual growth, the ability to use your mind and the ability to think through issues and resolve them logically. Stature is physical growth and the ability to make sure you are eating healthy, sleeping the hours that you, or your, according to your body's need, um, making sure you have exercise in your life, you don't get obese, uh, the, the, you're taking vitamins where you need them, you dress well, you, you know how to uh, um, help it with work and so on in the house, those skills are developed. Then favor with God is your spiritual growth. So the way you are relating with, with God and with yourself, God is pleased with it. He, he sees a heart that is devoted to him and willing to work out your spiritual growth. And then there's favor with man, that socially you're gaining the skills for listening, for loving people, for, for service and helpfulness, and the value systems that go with it to make you a godly person out of your godly of your relationship with God. A lot of the time, when there are defects in these areas and we have not learned the skills, we don't fit too well or we get unhealthy. We'll look at that in the next slide. The second area of balance is the area of the body, the soul, and the spirit. God made us body, soul, and spirit. They are integrated. You, 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 you cannot separate them and, and exist by that. If you are very tired physically, I think all of us will acknowledge that it's difficult to do your Bible study. It's even difficult to pray. And if you uh, are too spiritual and you, you don't bath, you don't, you, you're almost walking in air, there's that's not the life God has called us to. We also have a soul. It has emotions, feelings. It has a will. It has uh, the intellect that we spoke of above. And all these need to be engaged in a homogeneous way to create a balanced life. And so when people over-spiritualize things, it's not God's will. There is a balance between the three. And the last one is character scale. That in this area, we need to develop our character. Now, most of the time, our character seems to be imposed on us by our circumstances. But as Christ is formed in us, you see from the passage we're reading, certain qualities start to develop in us. We have self-control. We don't drink and get drunk. We are not violent, we're gentle. The, the, there's a whole list, we're not quarrelsome, we know how to sort out uh, interpersonal conflict. Those characters, and we, and we love peace because that is what we are called to do, to be ambassadors to, for reconciliation. The ability to um, make sure that we don't get conceited, which is a form of pride, but we are humble. All those things, one needs to sometimes sit quietly before the Lord. Or like Marcus, Marcus, I loved what you shared. You, you have accountability partners, other people who can talk to you that the thing you said the last time, it wasn't according to what you say in the Bible. And I think you need to sit down and look at it. When you don't have that type of person in your life or you don't admit to it for people to be able to help you, then you stay in a kind of world, half world, half Christian character, and it doesn't lead you up into the works of the kingdom. 
in the fullness that God would have for you. A second area is your family balance. So in this area, the two big things that you we need to work at for balance is this balance between love and respect. That is in Ephesians 5, between husband and wife. But it spills over to the children and the household members, the maid, the driver, the gardener. If there's love and respect between a husband and wife, the children pick it up and the house help pick it up. So I remember a gentleman who told me that every time he gets home or his wife comes home from town, he goes to open the gate for her. He doesn't allow the watchman or the maid to do it. He wants to show respect to his wife. And when his wife comes to his office, he stands up. And because of that, everybody in his office stands up when she comes. That core of, of, of neighbor love is built up first and foremost in the family. We cannot say we, we love outsiders when we do not love our family more. And so it, it's important to consider the, also the roles of provider and nurturer. There are so many, excuse me to say, men. We don't care for the family the way we ought to. The mother is the nurturer beyond breast milk. She, she nurtures the teenager. She nurtures the adult children. And as fathers, we still, still have this provider nurturer. There's a wonderful word in scripture called in the older versions, I think KJV used to use it. It says the husband man. A husband man looks after the flock and the farm, and he cares for them as a nurturer. So it isn't just a female quality. It is also a male quality. And when we are at home, we shouldn't just say that I've provided, so everything else is left to the mother. It is part of our work to also nurture. And when these things are are provided in the home. There's all work of modeling and teaching, which comes from Deuteronomy 6, four to seven, where the whole environment of the home and the relationships within it are used to teach children how to live out God's word, how to see the wisdom that comes from it and the practical ways it applies for watching TV, for going on the internet, for helping with work so that they learn how to be productive and they are following our model. And also the work of discipling our children to have a sincere faith. It is not the first work of the Sunday school teacher. It is the work that is supposed to be done in the home. So the child has life context when he's looking at engaging life in, uh, it, when he goes out to school or when they begin to work or when they begin to marry, they have Christ formed in them because we played that role as parents. The unbalanced side, I'm sorry, this looks a little gory, but when we've been counseling people, we see tears of blood so often in pe from people's lives because the marriage has dysfunction or an uncle or, or somebody living in the house has mistreated the young girl in the house and abused her and it, people's hearts bleed. There's a certain tension that comes from neglect of, our, of, of this strata of our lives and, and leads to imbalance. And I'm afraid that very often the two culprits are work and ministry. That because of attention to those, we, we neglect certain responsibilities at home and it, re, it leads to a lot of bleeding and hurt. The heart of, of, the, of the wedding that came out with two joined together is split in two and the blood drips onto our relationship with God, the pain, and the Bible warns us that if we are not gentle and compassionate and tender in dealing with our marriages and the people at home, 
God does not hear our prayers. So it's one of the reasons why family is the next thing after God, between love your neighbor, your core neighbor as yourself, and make sure you're treating each other in a tender and godly way. We neglect it. God, it, it, it affects our, our personal relationship with God, and that is not a good balance at all to have. Our th third area is the work zone. Now, I think a lot of us will identify with the terrorism of work in our lives because going to the office, staying till late, coming home is so disruptive. I want to look at that later, but I want us to begin by looking at a godly weight for work. What is God's purpose for work? Why is it a blessing? Let's pick up our value for that before we look at the problems it has caused. So you see somebody like Daniel, who was exported as an exile into a different country, as a foreigner. And his values about working without corruption or negligence, and the ethics, ethical standards with which he behaved, caused a lot of blessing for the nations that he served. He served under five kings, like, that's like five uh, times four democratic dispensations in, uh, in our calendar. And everybody valued him. He used the opportunity to leverage God's kingdom in those situations. And so when we, we, we just go at work because it just gives us money, like one of sometimes employers tell uh, they are employees during evaluation sessions. Why are you here? He says, I want money. It's such a poor balance. It's, it's, an, it's not a godly balance because the Bible says that a good name is better than riches. Why are you working? I'd like you to ask yourself that question. Is it just for material things or is it so that you can be a vessel for the kingdom of God to grow in your workplace? And incidentally, because you do it well, you also get paid and promoted for it. So we look at character at work. Joseph. Joseph demonstrated such godly character that it got him in trouble. But it also led through all that trouble to his high promotion. And the, the line at the bottom that says, your gift is your promotion. David yeah, um, Joseph was such a demonstration of that, that your gift will find, make way for you before kings. And in workplaces, I'm an employer. So I, 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 I look at these things in the light of scripture. And I realize that the people who work 120%, they are the people you want to, to, to move up the scale in your employment uh, groups and to take more responsibility because they are trustworthy. You, you can depend on them. Their output is high and they bring a profit to the work. Even Joseph, who unfortunately had different character at work than Joseph, uh, even Jacob than Joseph, you still see he brought value to Laban as he was working with him and Laban's flocks multiplied tremendously. Is it only for profit that, or for money profit that we work. No, there are other types of profit in the workplace or out of the in engagement with work, good relationships and teamwork, um, health because of success and, and, and fruitfulness in work. There's also opportunity to relate with others and to build the knowledge of God practically modeling who Christ is in, in you, in the workplace and witnessing to others. We joined a group called God at Work. The at work is the email at. And the thesis was that every Christian in a workplace is a representative of God in the work environment. It's where uh, Pastor Felix may not be able to go because he's wearing a collar, other people, will accept me or you in your workplace because you are not 
flagged as, as a righteous person holier than them. And they show you who they are. And God leads you through loving relationships to minister to them. Work is a godly blessing and the earth is also blessed from it. When it gets imbalanced, all kinds of things start cropping up because it's a big part of our time use each day and of the, the wrestling of, work, of, of, of value systems within us relating to time use and to money. It, work easily gets into overwork, either from the employer's driving force or from the employee's ambitions or the self-employed person. And it's so easy for mammon to begin to do the python squeeze on your life when you don't watch your balance in this area. And for the lion also to start biting areas of the, the other aspects of your life, your family, your, your relationship with God, your social life. And sometimes, unfortunately, as those areas deteriorate, so does ministry. And so many of us are struggling with this area where we are living to work rather than working to live. And if you identify yourself in this area, sometimes there's some very big decisions that need to be taken. I remember we, we had architects who used to um, leave their profession to go and work for banks because the banks were paying so much more. And they didn't realize that they were going into slavery because now they can't leave until their books are balanced and you are there at 7.30, you're leaving at 11, you're getting home at 12, and your wife is upset with you, the children don't know you, and you, you yourself are, are fatigued. But mammon is squeezing and you must respond. How does one work balance in such circumstances? I think you need to look at the godly scales. Is money everything? Can you reorganize the balance so that between your wife and you, one of you is part-time, one is full-time, and the costs of petrol for going up and down in two cars, the cost of uh, special fees at nursery for over time use are saved in order to be able to balance the care that you need at every level below and above work. The fourth area we want to touch on is the social balance. In the passage we read, the person who is walking with God and seeking a godly balance seeks to have a good reputation. So we've looked at the Daniel example. We also want to look at the Proverbs 31, where we remember the, the woman in this passage. But I want to point to the man. The Bible says one, only a few things about the man, or one of them is that he's known in the city gate. That means that he's respected. People consult him for advice. He has developed his life and demonstrated his relationship with God, his care for his family, a good working life, and a reasonable or, or balanced uh, between helping with work and profiting from work. And because of that, he, his, his word carries weight in society. And we all want to see how we can have that platform so that when we speak at the boardroom or in the trotro line or in our neighborhood uh, uh, community meetings, people don't just scoff at us. Things like drunkenness, a propensity to laziness, those things eat at our reputation. And we want to try to avoid that. The imbalance of social media. You see how the phone and the media have become such a big weight in the lives of almost everybody. You're looking at your phone every 10 minutes. People are annoyed with you if you haven't returned a call or you haven't liked a particular thing in Facebook. And it's domination is squeezing down the, our work life, it's squeezing into our family life, 
it's squeezing into our time for God. If we, if we had a, a, a row on our uh, weigh yourself by time, it would be really surprising to most of us how much time goes into the media. And remember, it is at the top of the balanced pyramid, at the area where more contact, less intimacy. So how are you able to love and give yourself a, a, a love your neighbor platform when this thing is such a heavy weight in your life? We need to look at it. I want to state cautiously that it can also be a wonderful tool, but if you don't keep it in balance, you lose the benefit of that. The last area is the area of ministry. The word noble really struck me as I studied the passage, and I want you to look at it as a precious word in this issue of building balance. You can have all kinds of balances, but if you aim at a noble balance, it gives you direction for choosing the very best, not good or poor, but better and best. To have a purpose-driven life gives you the ability to do what God has sent you onto this earth to do, to accomplish it richly, to, 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 to let people thank God for your life because you have touched them. And that is where I've intentionally left church out. Because when we go to church, we are going to minister as well to God. We're going to minister to other people. So we can't say this is just the area for the full time, so to speak, um, people who are called. We are all called to ministry, a public worship and a public testimony at any strata of our life a membership in church, not just by a roster, but by participation and, and serving God in everything we do and say, deploying our spiritual gifts and learning how to do it better and better and being servant leaders in any area that we are called. So, Like we said about body, soul, and spirit. And I want to, yes. We have 10 minutes. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm going to close with this one. Okay, that's fine. And then we can go to the, we'll do the next, if, if it's possible, we'll do the, the rest next week. Okay. So I want right. to close with this one. Yes, please. The body, soul, and spirit are a picture of the way God wants us to balance things. Even though we say we are a spiritual man and growing spiritually, it is not God's will for us to neglect our bodies. And in the same way, at every level of our pyramid, God wants them to be integrated. They are not shelves we pull out like I was showing in the other thing. That was just for learning. How do we integrate? And, and I think that from my experience, my humble experience that I can leave with you. It is Jesus Christ who integrates our life with the word of God and with his spirit. The true vine grows through the pyramid and brings out the potential to bear fruit at every level. And the vine dresser who is God takes his pruning shears and cuts off when we have too many leaves a guilty place is ministry. We can be so excited about the spiritual fruit and the ministry of our gifts that we grow plenty leaves there. And a lot of the energy of Christ formed in us ends up there and denies the same sap to areas lower down. God can prune us. We can also prune ourselves. And sometimes God cuts off areas so that we can put some energy into uh, neglected parts of our life and build back a balance. Sometimes it's a friend or usually painfully a spouse 
whose criticism tells uh, or continued criticism tells us that we are off balance. And it's good to develop a hearing ear and an ability to obey God and make a rebalance in these areas. So I will stop there. If they, we can take a few questions or contributions before we close. Wow, such an amazing <laughs> session. God bless you, Uncle Ralph. God bless you for the deep, deep thoughts you've shared with us tonight. Yeah, we have some few more minutes. Uh, I haven't seen any question in the chat, but if you want to ask a question or you want to make a contribution, you can uh, put up your hand and we will call you. Uh, anybody, any question, any contribution, any addition? Anybody saying anything, making a, co a contribution or a question? Feel free to ask anything you want to navigate, how to navigate your, your way around. We're talking about the how. If you are so satisfied to tell us what you are so satisfied about. <laughs> Oh, anybody sharing share anything? Gina, are you there? I can see Gina. Gina, Felix. Hey, I want to Rodney. know. Uh -huh. I want to know um, what part um, burn out plays in throwing us off balance. I'm not sure whether maybe the next session, um, Uncle Raph might want to. Uh, I know the time is kind of up, but burn out in any of the areas. Um, sometimes even in the house. So people want to leave. They want to um, leave that aspect of their of that pyramid, and then work, you know. And then social, uh, there are a lot of um, us, especially here in Ghana or Africa. There's a an unwritten rule that one must attend every funeral, every uh, wedding, every naming ceremony every one week, every day, you know, so constantly one is on the move in those areas to the detriment of, the, let's say, the house um, or ministry. Um, it, would that be addressed later or maybe can Uncle Ralph maybe at a later now or at a later time talk about that? I think... I'd like to attend to it a little later because it come, there's a whole session on running versus resting. Wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Rodley, you say you've learned a lot. Can you share one thing you've learned with us? Rodley, are you in the house? Yes, well, I'm on my way to work, so the place is not me. You're on your way to work. Yeah. Okay, so write write the thing in the chat for us. I will read it out. Okay. Danso, I can see you. Yeah. Uh, yes, can, please, Daddy, I'm here. Uh, I'll come back to you to tell me one thing you've learned. Uh, you can ask Empa your question or your contribution. Yeah, I joined quite late. Okay, raise up uh, I just want to find out if the recording will be made available together with the slides and where and from where do we get it from? From whom do we get it from? You can get them from me, uh, okay. but I'll, I'll confer with uh, uh, Uncle Ralph and then maybe ask permission to share with you if it's possible. The ones I can share, I will. All right. All right. 
Uncle Daniel, I'm, I'm an Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Uncle Ralph. So uh, my question is with regards to um, the pyramid. So God at the base, family, work, social, and ministry. Is it? My question has to do with, is it a function of time or a quality of relationship? So time, I mean, if, if I'm making, we, if God is the base, it means that as I spend more time, more of my time uh, uh, with my Bible studies and prayer and, and also with the family, I spend more of my time with my family than work, than the ministry, or it's about the quality of the relationship. I'd like to hear what other people think. It's a very good question. So it's, we should exercise our minds about it. In progress. Any, any, anybody, I, I saw my uh, uh, my chief rabbi in the house, Uncle Joshua. Uh, last week, I didn't come to pay my school fees, so today I'm copying <laughs> the books. <laughs> <laughs> you want to, to, to say something about the question? <laughs> hmm. I'm still copying notes, so I'm listening carefully. Okay. <laughs> Any thought? I think we are uh, we just have some one minute or so to seven. Anybody? Okay, uh, so uh, Lois uh, is saying that I think it's a balance of the two because a lot of time does not always equate to quality. All right, so that's all Lois is saying uh, in the chat. So let me add a few thoughts to that. One of the areas we try to swave our guilt or solve our guilt when we know we have not been at home for our family enough because of things above the chart, the, the level of spouse and children. We say, oh, I'll make quality time. That is a very deceptive thing in terms of effectiveness. Children need time. Actually, so do spouses. The ability to sit and be with them is the biggest communicators of love that exists or listen to them, but they are minimized. So quality time usually means some pressed attention to them with the watch being referred to uh, from time to time, and it spoils the whole thing. At the same time, it's unrealistic to say that I'll spend of my 24 hours, I'll give God eight, I'll give my spouse and children four, I'll give work three, I'll, et cetera. It doesn't, life doesn't work like that. So our relationship with God is carried through our work and our social life. It is carried into ministry. So you cannot separate it. Because of that outlook, I still need or in spite of that outlook, I still need to make dedicated time to be alone with God. Jesus demonstrated this beautifully. But how often did he go up the mountain? We can assume it was his habit to go for personal quiet time a great while before dawn. But the rest of his day is integrated with his relationship with God, his prayer life, his uh, his dependence on the Holy Spirit. And when we have that integration, then the time quality balance is better looked after. Okay. Okay. I, I, I think there's one more question, but uh, I want to beg that we will take it uh, uh, later uh, because uh, it's seven o'clock. And someone is just asking that, the ministry, how does it become too much to be pruned? I mean, I think 
uh, it might be on this last integration bit. Uh, so we cannot can be thinking ask, about it. Can I ask a pastor's wife to answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> well, so if I would like us to probably pick it next week, if possible, mm. we'll mm. start with it. So mm. we can all be reflecting on it and be chewing on it. And then uh, uh, permission from the house to take two minutes so that we can hear SP's voice. Uh, SP, good evening. I thought you would spare me. Uh, well, uh, thank you. I, well, I cannot uh, just uh, it's seven, yeah. so. Yes. Uh, oh, you, you cannot just leave me here. Okay, so <laughs> next week I won't attend. <laughs> oh, no, we beg you. <laughs> I, 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 Simply, uh, this is a fantastic teaching uh, throughout, uh, not meant to be paternalizing. I didn't mean to be that way. But I think the question we are discussing, how do we attain the balance and all of that fits into a little bit to what I was sharing about the objectives, activity, timetable, and, schedule, and scheduling. Uh, like engineer, engineer Amani was asking, is it a function of time? Yeah, it is a function of time, children need time. But if you have one week, and you are able to plan the day, taking cognizance of all these fires, fires layers of the, of, the, of the pyramid, you will see that uh, it will become clear to you where, where you are feeling. If you are reviewing, if I look at what you are doing, say, hmm, for this part, even though I've scheduled to be there at seven to eight, I've not even given any time to them the whole week at all. You will find that things you didn't schedule, like the, the social media that is sitting and killing all of us, it takes more time, even though you didn't plan for it. Fortunately, Google will tell you, or the phone will tell you how many hours you use them during the day or during the week. And they, they, will, they will tell you whether it's up or down. And that sometimes even is a rebuke to me. Uh, it, it tells you how many times you used it, how many hours, I said, mm, thank you. If they can tell me how many times I'm using them, Lord help me. So oh, the, the scheduling and the timing also helps if you consider these as priorities and you draw some charts like Uncle Rav gave to us to monitor yourself, the unexamined life or the examined life is what helps us by the grace of God to know where we are missing, what is going wrong, and what we want to emphasize. Thank you. Thank you so much, SP. We just love to listen to you. God bless you for the concluding thoughts. Uh, all right, so this session was meant to be two sessions, and uh, as it is, we couldn't do all. So we want to beg that next week we will. Uh, add one more session like Anke Raf uh, uh, is saying so that we could clear what is left. Uh, so I, I propose uh, at least uh, 10 minutes after seven because uh, next week we're going to be in the fasting uh, week. We'll be in the fasting week. So uh, if he has to come on, uh, it will be uh, 10 minutes after seven so that we can all join to uh, get the last part of what's Ankara, I don't know how possible that is because I know you have some other engagement. Uh, so, is Ankara in the house? I was saying that uh, I'm normally in a meeting at seven at or seven. seven to eight. Yes. So let's let let's talk on the phone. We'll come to a middle ground. Okay. So uh, you you see the the notice uh, if it will come on. Uh, so just keep your fingers crossed. God richly, richly bless all of us. Amen. Amen. Can see uh, also for Kingsley, uh, also, uh, if you could do us the honors and pray with us. Pastor Kingsley. Pastor Kingsley there. Pastor Kingsley also. Maybe you are muted. Okay. Dr. Bote, are you still around? I'm trying to look, locate you. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, Reverend Doctor, kindly bless us. Thank you, dear Lord, for 
this day for the wisdom that has come out to us. Father, we thank you for Uncle Ruff and the wisdom you've given to him and the way he's been able to share with us. Thank you for all those who gathered by this same media, social media, to listen. To you be the praise, to you be the glory. Father, help us to integrate all that we've heard and all that we've learned in all that we do. When we are being pulled left and right from, from all sides, give us the wisdom and understanding to be able to know our limits, where to say no, where to say yes. And Lord, help us this week, even as we go through this week, to be able to, be able to integrate in all these uh, various aspects of the pyramid, all that we have learned. Father, you are the one who is wise and who is full of wisdom and is wisdom. So Lord, thank you for this day. May we be richer for having spent an hour and a few minutes, Lord, in your presence to understand the things around us through your servant, Uncle Ralph. Be with us, Lord, we pray. And now, Lord, help us to have a good evening. Help us to sleep well. Watch over us and our families this night. And tomorrow morning when we wake up, help us to remember to give you thanks and praise for a new life and having watched over us. In Jesus' name, we are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Feel free Amen. to send comments. Comment and the feedback to Amen. the number, and uh, we'll be glad to receive them. Thank good night, good night, good night, all of you. God bless. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> 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 Oh. Well, I thought I left it in. Okay. Wow, you came here and I have closed.